both. So this mm. meeting is being recorded. Okay. Did that start the record? Yeah, it did. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> okay, ladies, who does not want to know how to stop our faces from aging? I think every single one of us. And it's really funny because I never took any, you know, any time or I didn't spend any energy on putting different things on my face. I literally washed my face with soap and I would put on like a cream that I used to just make in my kitchen. And that was my skincare routine up until probably about a a couple years ago and then I started to use different starting to kind of get into the different things that we put on our faces but still it was extremely minimal like I think I started with my bias a bias cream and that was pretty much what I used for a couple of years and then I started oh I bought a little hyaluronic acid and I bought some other stuff and then I started to actually see like things starting to change my face. And I was like, okay, there might be something to this. And then as I got into menopause and I started seeing a lot more wrinkles sprouting, it seemed like by the day and my neck skin, I'm sure you can all relate, really started to change. And I was like, oh my goodness. So then I got it like super into like, okay, what do I need to be putting on my, my skin here? I've been, now been sent because of the size of my podcast many different samples of many different facial stuff <laughs> and a couple of months ago i was asked to come on the podcast biohacking beauty podcast um, with my guest today and he is the owner of a company called young goose and so i had heard about young goose by my friend nat nidham and, and I had been wanting to try it desperately. And so he was nice enough to offer to send me some of his products after he interviewed me. And I've been now using his products for several months now. And I'm loving them. And so I needed him to come on the podcast and share his knowledge with all of us about skin care. So Amate Eshal is an entrepreneur in the biohacking and beauty fields. He has held executive roles in the health, wellness, and beauty industry for over a decade, as well as being a business development consultant in that space. As co-founder and CEO of Young Goose and host of the Young Goose's Biohacking Beauty podcast, Amate has been making waves in the wellness industry through education and innovation. Young Goose embodies his two passions, performance optimization and skin health with products that boost the functions of natural rejuvenation processes in the skin. He is an avid history student and aims to always educate himself on the latest science of health, longevity, and well-being. So welcome to the show, Amate. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you. It's my pleasure and obviously uh, a great honor to, to come on the podcast. Yes. And so I really, I, I'm not just saying this. I really do love your products. <laughs> I was yeah, telling that's because my... we sent you the good ones. No, <laughs> I did. I got the, I got three different things and I'm like, oh, I, I like cherish every drop that comes out of them. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so great. I was showing my sister the other day who's a little bit older than I am. And I'm like, look at my face. I've been using this stuff on my face. It's so great. <laughs> so she'll probably be buying some, I think. Okay. So tell me the story of what's behind Young Goose. Like, how did you come into this? Well, Young Goose, actually the story behind Young Goose is is, is actually interesting because we started more in your neck of the woods rather than in skincare. What what we tried to do, so we were a part of, or I was a part of uh, the world's first real red light therapy company. Uh, and when, okay. that, when that got sold, um, we had some money which we didn't know what to do with. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't need a lot of money to be honest with you to live. We were pretty young. So we were kind of doing biohacking, I would say before biohacking was a thing. And yeah. we fell in love with NAD IVs, NAD, which is ah. kind of the, it's called the molecule of life. It's, it's, it's what gives energy for any, any process that we need in our body. So we fell in love with it, but you know, a decade ago or a little bit more, this, 
ADIV was about $1,500. And we just understood, oh my God, this is something that someone needs to do a couple of times a month or you know every week. How would normal people that didn't, you know, don't have money to just burn, how would they get the benefit? And obviously today there are a lot of ways to get the benefits. Back then there weren't. And what we tried to do is to create a the same uh, cream that people use for like hormone replacement therapy. We tried to do that for NAD. So we tried to do like a tra transdermal NAD infusion oh, yeah. and we failed miserably. Oh, wow. Darn, I was like, I haven't seen this. I see why now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, we, we, um, we didn't really figure out why in the beginning, but we saw that there is no difference in NAD in blood serum levels, which is kind of what you can, or in plasma, which mm -hmm. is what you can kind of measure. Um, in the beginning, we were very, very optimistic. It's like <laughs> the muscles absorb it so fast. We don't, but no, uh, the reason <laughs> was it was actually because the skin didn't share. The skin loved it so much and needed it so much, especially if we're not like, you know, 15, 20 years old, that there wasn't enough to be absorbed to the rest of your body or to your bloodstream. And, you know, we basically made lemonade out of lemons and we made a skin cream out of it, which was our first product that's called CARE, um, which stands for Cellular Anti-Aging Repair and Energy. Uh, and that was the first product. Uh, by you know, by now, we saw by the way that even if we get the skin to behave like like a younger tissue, like your cells behave younger, which is mm -hmm. what you can do with NAD, it doesn't really mean that you're going to look younger per se. Um, to connect to what you said before, part of the reason you saw the results in the beginning was because you didn't do anything beforehand. So there, your skin kind of had deficiencies to address mm -hmm. but for the most part your skin doesn't know a wrinkle is a problem it doesn't know pigmentation is a problem so even if you're giving it all the all the ability to repair damage we also need to communicate that damage is something that needs to be repaired um okay. and that is why there is a company that's more than this one product it's a company that now targets all the 12 hallmarks of aging in your skin every you know every name that we gave cellular aging if you would and also kind of tells the skin hey remember that wrinkle you were you have let's go ahead and, and treat that um you know it's not i don't think it's an anti-aging company i think the name anti-aging is misleading there's no such thing because you you age age is accumulation of damage so you age anyway Mm -hmm. But what we can do is give the skin the ability to address that age and also signals to go back and repair, unrepair damage. But anti-aging, I actually don't like the word. <laughs> so, but you can, like, this is what I always question is, you know, like, I just noticed that with your stuff, my skin, it it, it feels better. I think it just looks better. Um, it feels more hydrated or, you know, like my skin tone is better. And I use other, you know, I use other things too. Um, I think that help, but, you know, I, I, there's really nothing that's going to take away the wrinkles that are already there, I guess, is my question. Well, the, the, the question is, so wrinkle per se isn't aging. You know, wrinkle is a sign of, again, like unrepaired damage or mechanical changes that happened that inflammation isn't associated with them. So the body doesn't understand that there, it needs to go back and repair them. Now the question is this, how much inflammation do you want to introduce? And what will your body do with it? Because you can, you, you, you can reverse the, 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 the appearance of, of your wrinkles. You didn't, you didn't even improve any of, the sign, any of the names that we give aging. Your cells aren't younger, but they, you look younger. Which yeah. is, which is, I, I think it's a positive thing, but as you do more and more and more of that, so you can go, you, you can do lasers, you can do um, many things you, you can, you, there are injectables today that, that would to some extent encourage collagen production, et cetera. But the question is then 
how does your body go go ahead and do that? Does it do it like an older body, older cell matrix, or a younger cell matrix? That is how you can get better or worse results, or even results that are actually counterproductive in the future. Okay. I think I get it. You just imagine like, <laughs> let's say you live in a house, the house is great, right? But the house is, is aging, <laughs> you know, yes. wear and tear. <laughs> uh, now you're going to get like a handyman. The question is like, okay, how much can that handyman do without sleep? Like just go ahead and run through the thing. So when is it, when do you have the point of diminishing returns where he makes more mistakes that actually would, that would compromise long-term the, the viability, the the survivability of the house, of the infrastructure, etc. With what resources is he, is it going to use? Because again, we have limited resources. So at some point, going to say, "Wow, she really wants that, you know, window frame fixed." But I'm out of wood, so I need to take some of the of the uh, the you know the way again. <laughs> I don't know much about housing. The 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 <laughs> infrastructure of the house, the bottom of the house, we're just gonna take some of it out. And I'm gonna put it here on the windowsill. So we're gonna have a very nice window, but the house, you know, might not, you know, be very stable. So that can happen. Like our skin doesn't behave very well as we get older, especially post menopause. Uh, right. Especially the less um fertile we are fertility and the communication of youth for the most part go hand in hand unless we are proactive about mm -hmm. which i talked about that on your podcast like just the loss yeah. of hormones and the what it does to the collagen and your skin yeah. and like that right and so you said you guys have like a did you say 12 hallmarks of aging that you're addressing in the skincare? Yeah, well, you know, when uh, in 2013, there was a very, very important paper that came out in Cell magazine, which is probably the most important, together with Nature, most important magazine to, to, to publish something in. Yeah. And they were talking about the nine hallmarks of aging. And they actually covered the entire gamut of what aging is. But what is going on afterwards is that there is semantics. So they're saying, hey, you said, you know, this big thing, there's actually part of it that we would like to define as a different different process. So, you know, they're saying by next year, there's going to be 25 hallmarks of aging. We're going to still right. cover all the 25. There are just now more semantics and like sub whatever. Right, right. Yeah, sub columns. Yeah, but right. we cover okay. the entire the entire aging process from a cellular point of view. Okay, because I want to get into very specific ingredients because it is so overwhelming when you start to go out there and try and find yourself something that's going to stop the aging process or slow it down or reverse it. Uh, and it gets like, well, do I need to spend, you know, $500 on this serum that looks exactly the same as this ordinary serum that's for $10? Uh, and then it's like, what do we need? Do we need the vitamin C? Do we need NAD? Do we need vitamin B? Do we need vitamin C? Do we <laughs> like it, it is, there's so much. Um, yeah. so I want to go through like some of like the number one things that everybody needs to be applying on their face. Um, okay. So let's start with uh, vitamin C because that is a very popular one. Okay. So first of all, uh, vitamin C is crucial. And the reason is, is because it is a cofactor for collagen production. Okay. okay. The, it also helps us uh, stave off some of the pigmentation, the uneven pigment that we can get. Yes. But there is actually something that everyone should know, and that is that what we think of vitamin C isn't the same, I would say, makeup of vitamin C that you would have in nature. So vitamin C, as we know it, which is called ascorbic acid, mm -hmm. is actually a name of a very specific section within a vitamin C complex you're going to find in your, you know, orange okay okay and okay. 
it's missing a lot of the components that would allow it to communicate with the body in the way that a vitamin, natural vitamin C from nature is going to is going to communicate with the body. And when we have high concentrations, like we have in skincare products, which are you know 10, 20 percent of ascorbic acid, this is actually causing DNA damage from becoming an anti uh, anti antioxidant it actually becomes a pro-oxidant and it becomes something that creates dna damage and actually leads to cell death um, and actually ages you uh, and the benefits that we are getting it's more because of its acidity and its damage for the skin that the skin to some extent can recover from than from those benefits of like helping collagen be, be, be produced or uh you know suppressing the way of of kind of curbing the amount of pigment that we produce. So I highly, highly, highly recommend more wholesome versions of vitamin C, such as, uh, so not ascorbic acid, but something okay. that says uh, ascorbal or ascorbate next to its name. And the reason is normally they are attached to a... Um, mineral so for example map vitamin c which is magnesium ascorbyl phosphate is a water soluble vitamin c which is which we need in some formulations you mentioned you know hyaluronic acid so hyaluronic acid lives in water so normally we need you know to find this vitamin c if we have hyaluronic acid there or uh uh thd ascorbate which is yeah which is uh which is in oil based product um, like a moisturizer for example most of the time so okay. these would be vitamin c's that are significantly better for your skin they also don't damage your skin barrier the way that ascorbic acid would in general i would in my eyes ascorbic acid is the most toxic ingredient or the most toxic toxic or the most used toxic ingredient in skincare Oh my gosh, I think I'm using more straight than, up absorbic acid on my face. More, more than paraben. And one of the products. Just, oh, what? Oh no. More than paraben, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I got to check one of the labels then on one of the ones. Because I just bought it recently thinking, oh, I should probably just try vitamin C just straight up. And I bought, I'm pretty sure it was absorbic acid vitamin C cream. Yes. So Okay, great. So, again, so I'm just damaging my skin. Okay. <laughs> Good thing I have you on the podcast. This is all just for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it, by the way, that is also when you ingest it. So I would look for, if you really need, which I believe you do, if you really need a um, good source of vitamin C to, to ingest, uh, acerola cherry powder is mm, great. Yeah. If you won't need to put it in smoothies or just look for like, calcium or sodium ascorbate is okay. far as like as far as like the type of vitamin c and don't take ascorbic acid ascorbic acid just to finish on that is actually synthetic like the yes the the, the molecule that you're going to take is not is a synthetic molecule mm -hmm. yeah i knew that yeah i always try and get the acerola cherry based vitamin c yeah. products which design for health has that and so yes. that's the company i usually take um, okay, hyaluronic acid. Or my, is this is this pro oxidation too, or what? No, no, no. It's a great okay. product, and, <laughs> and I think it's so. I think it's very misunderstood. Okay, okay. It, it's misunderstood because it's a great product to give you the appearance of youth, and together with some other ingredients, it could also it could also prevent your skin from losing moisture, but it is not what most people think it is, which is a hydrator. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, it's because you, your skin doesn't actually absorb hydration from the outside. It gets it from the inside, from your bloodstream, et cetera. It doesn't, it doesn't get it. So the pros, normally people say like that. If, if they think hyaluronic acid is good for you, they're saying, oh, it adds hydration to your skin because that is one of the components your skin uses. Actually, it has its own mm -hmm. gene complex uh, to produce hyaluronic acid, because that is, you know, the, the famous saying is that hyaluronic acid can hold a thousand times its weight in moisture, mm -hmm. in water. So mm -hmm. people think, oh, it's a hydrator. 
that's fine, but that's not that wouldn't happen from you applying it on your skin. The 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 other camp is going to say hyaluronic acid will absorb if you don't have enough moisture in your skin or in the environment for it to absorb moisture from the environment, it's going to leach it from your skin. That You'll hear that as well, which is also oh. kind of BS, again, because that's not where moisture for the skin actually reside. Okay. That is why oils in general, when they say, oh, oils had a, had a hydration, they can add suppleness, suppleness and movement. They can, again, uh, they're actually really bad hydrators. They actually contribute zilch for hydration. Um, um zero any oil doesn't doesn't hydrate your skin so um yeah so for 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 that sake hyaluronic acid is great to plump up the skin and with other ingredients it can create a barrier to which water cannot escape the skin as easily it's called transepidermal water loss so it could prevent some of that but it is not a great hydrator having said that Around 6% hyaluronic acid in a product seems to be very good to prevent that loss of hydration and to plump the skin to appear, as we said, younger. But there are ingredients, by the way, you can use to increase the, uh, the, the expression of the hyaluronic acid genes in your skin, which then you will get more hydration. There's also, so I'll give you two. Yeah. One. Uh, is uh, uh, algae extract that is called Eudarian algae extract. Um, in that specific extract, okay, it's not like the entire algae, but that specific extra extract can increase the expression of that gene. You know, it depends how active it is, it is, but let's say you're someone in your 50s, it could, it could increase it by like 40%. Um, another one, so that's like, one we make it for example in a, in in our um in our pro care which is a senolytic product it's mainly like eliminating senescent cells but it also does that another one which you can find in uh pretty much in a lot of i would say mid tier and up skincare products now is called ectoin and ectoin is a protein that structures water around proteins so it actually builds structured water around protein. It's really yeah. good for to to help your skin deal with like EMF and pollution and um, heavy metals and glyphosate. Um, it's and, and even blue light, like artificial light, that damages the skin and, and and lowers you know energy production in the skin. So it can protect proteins from being damaged. Uh, aller, um, elastin has their sunblock has it uh we use it in a lot of products obviously percentage is important the more it's pretty expensive ingredient so if you're talking about like a 60 dollar elastin sunblock it's not going to have as much as our like 125 dollar sunblock that has it it would have double that amount literally but if you want to, if you do, if you don't have, the, if you just want to try it out, if you don't have the budget to like splurge, and you want to try this ingredient, look for Ectoin in 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 skincare products. Um, there are actually two types of Ectoin. So sometimes you'll find like someone will say we have seven percent. So sometimes not the entire thing is Ectoin. Just as an okay, yeah, okay. As long as, <laughs> but as long as it's more than like zero point five percent, it's something that you should be feeling a difference. Uh, so if okay. you have more than 0.5% ectoin, something that you should be feeling a significant improvement in hydration. Another thing about ectoin is that it can actually, so normally things including hyaluronic acid can give you the, 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 the more hydration again, because they prevent escape of water uh, and they can increase hydration by up to 20% because of that on average. But you know, once you wash them off and you per that that barrier, that natural barrier of water loss is being washed off, that effect be is being washed off as well. So your skin okay. kind of isn't more hydrated, right? Ectoin yeah. has a, a, a an effect for 11 days. Oh. <laughs> so wow. for 11 days, your skin is more You're hydrated. Gonna... Right. And so is it better to find a product then that contains... Ectoin? 
ectoin rather than using just a straight up hyaluronic serum by yeah, itself? Just straight up, straight up hyaluronic acid serum is going to be only for your appearance. Also, it doesn't have, if, if we have a hyaluronic acid serum, for example, you mentioned ordinary, which is a very good, I'd say like a starting point. If you want to play with a product, you want to see, because they're very specific. They're going to ha yes. have like matrixyl 3000 peptide or matrixyl peptide. Yeah. We're going to have this and that. They, that's, they normally don't have like a combination of things. So you could kind of even, you know, you can be your own scientist and kind of see, okay, this specific ingredient, how does my skin react to it, right? Whereas you can say, okay, I really liked that. Obviously, I want all these other ingredients and effects as well on my skin. So now I know I want to spend a little bit more money, but I know this ingredient I like, you know? Okay. Um, so just straight up hyaluronic acid, for example, that the ordinary has, and I think they have between six to eight percent, which is great. Yeah. Um, would not be anything I would buy on its own because on its own, it only gives you the appearance of plumpness or the feeling of hydration. I doubt it even does that, but the the the, the appearance of plumpness, which washes off, so we're not actually target targeting anything on a cellular level, if it makes sense. Yep, no, that makes sense because I, I I did get one from The Ordinary, so I have been using it. So it's good to know. And I'm just maybe feeling like it's doing something rather than <laughs> it actually doing something. Okay, good. I, and it's I, cheap. Even, it's a cheap one, which is kind yeah. of nice. Like, you know, you can I, put it I on would even, and... I'd even argue that if you are, if you constantly have that feeling, then that that's kind of counter in, counterintuitively that's not good because we want it anything that we're dealing with to be at some level fixed or resolved. Yes. So if every day you wake up and then you feel a certain way and then you put it on and feel another way, we're not we're just kind of no, putting a band aid yeah. every day. A band aid, yeah. Yeah, which is again. It's better than nothing. Let's be honest. Okay. If yeah, that's what right. you're going to use, great. <laughs> Go ahead and use it. Okay. Another ordinary product that I've experimented with, which I haven't used it enough to really know if it's doing anything, is the B6 and zinc. Uh huh. Is that a good serum? Um, not, you know, <laughs> I, I, it would be good if you're, if you're, if you're a person that, likes to get Botoxed very often. Okay. Okay, because you're depleting zinc. Oh, um, okay. But, Botox depletes zinc. Yes. You could just take it internally. It's going to cost less than the ordinary product, right. by the way. <laughs> but, um, but this, so B6 is uh, something that we need enzymatic expression in the liver to break down for the most part. So it's effect as opposed to other B vitamins, B3, B5, um, B12, B2, um, are not as topically bioavailable. I mean, they are to very to a very small extent. And we actually want the, uh, the non-native version, non-P5P. Uh, so, so, yeah, fair. It's just um, it wouldn't be like my first thing on the list. It wouldn't be something I go ahead. If a product has it, I wouldn't avoid it. For right. example, uh, Care, our original product, does have it because it's part of a B complex that we have there. So okay. it is again, we didn't make that B complex. We bought it from a manufacturer, right? So it already has it in there. That's not why we bought this complex. We bought this complex to give you the other B vitamins. But it already had it there, you know. So, right. so that's what's what you're going to see normally in products. That no one, you know, starts. I think we are, as far as I know, us and another company called Hydropeptide are the only companies that start with their own extraction method, their own active ingredient extraction method to some product. For the most part, other products could be fantastic, but they start lower down the chain. They buy a specific ingredient or something like that, which is 
sometimes just as good. The reason we do it is because, you know, no one makes NAD nano encapsulated NAD precursors, but we need to you know, go ahead and, and make them what we call in situ. So in the, yeah. Okay, interesting. And I'm going to get to peptides, but okay, uh, retinol. Please don't tell me that my retinol is bad too. No, retinol is great. Okay. Actually, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you there is a very, 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 very famous person, maybe the most famous person within the clean living space and he, you can't say who i don't want to kind of you know i don't okay. want to i don't want to you know he, he he reached out to me and he said hey <laughs> i'm doing my my podcast is kind of about you know things that you want to avoid and we have common friends like common friends so uh he he is like look I have a I have a podcast about you know skincare coming up, and we dedicated this ten minutes for retinol, but we actually can't find why it's bad for you. All I know is that some websites say it's bad for you, but I can't oh, find like I can't find science that says it's bad for you. And sometimes it it is like that in this, especially in the skincare industry. Sometimes there is correlation that you do because you can have too much vitamin a internally in just yes yeah right actually pretty easy to do yeah <laughs> but in your skin you're going to burn off your skin off before you're going to get to that you before you're going to get to literal toxicity okay. so retinol is not bad for you the thing that i think there is a misconception within retinol or vitamin a's a's retinoids is that more is better and mm -hmm. stronger is better. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that any type of vitamin A, any type of retinoid, isn't live, in air quotes, in your skin for more than 24 hours. It actually gets stored in its Easter version. It's, in its not Easter the holy day. <laughs> it's the, <laughs> the chemical. It has God, Easter God. groups that, that are, that are Esther attached groups, to. yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, but basically... <laughs> Uh, what I want to say is that it, it's in, and you can hear my baby in the background, it is in its inactive form. Uh, new baby, very yeah, new baby. Liv, Liv doesn't agree with me. Uh, <laughs> let's let's give, him, give him a second. Anyway, so... I can barely hear it. Oh, good. Anyway, yeah. so uh, uh, in its ester form, it actually doesn't doesn't do what we want it to do. So what you should be working towards is having a retinol that after six weeks of, of using retinol, you want to use something that you can use as often as possible. Not as strong as possible for two times a week, which is what normally happens with like retinol, uh, like uh, tretinoin, retinoic acid. Tretinoin is, the, is its the commercial name. Uh, so... We want to use something that doesn't damage our skin barrier. Number one, uh, we can get sensitive for the first six weeks. That's called retinization. And mm -hmm. our body kind of adjusts to it. But we want to work to something that we can use every other day or even every day, to be frank. And that way we have an active form every day in our skin. If it makes sense. Ah, okay. So what percent would you use every day? So you can start very low, and again, it depends on the on the form of retinol. Yeah. So what, I'll tell you what we use. We use zero point five percent, but we also have a very cool biomimetic lipid lipids, which are proprietary. So what we do is we mimic how the oils in your your skin barrier are are kind of formed together. And what we do is we offset that balance between the damaging effects of retinol to the skin barrier and the actual retinol that's absorbed into your skin. And our, again, the idea behind it is we want you to build up within, you know, six to 12 weeks to be using it at least every other day, if not every, every evening, every other evening to every evening. We actually have people who use it twice per day at a 0.5%, which is medium. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And it's is it in something with other ingredients or do you use it by itself? It, it's actually called bioretinol 
and we have so many people who are asking us to create higher percentages or incorporate it in other products or do this and that, but we want to make sure that this is a standalone product that you can use together with your ordinary, that you can use together with your whatever that may be, your choices of products, because we believe so strongly about that 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 paradigm of using it. Often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I got a prescription grade five percent tretinoid, I think it was. I think it's I think it's probably zero point zero five. Okay. <laughs> Or else I burn my face off. <laughs> yeah, five five percent. Uh, peel off, uh, big peel yeah. off my face. <laughs> what I would say, very, 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 very important, is that you want to use a sunblock every day if you're using any type of vitamin A, because you're becoming okay. more sensitive to the sun. Yeah. No. Um, I yeah. would think so. Yeah. I only use it twice a week usually because it is strong. It's a prescription, um, and I do apply it with another. Uh, topical cream, not with yours because yours has peptides in it, but um, yeah, I'll there use it actually, sparingly. We're going to get the peptides, but uh, there yes. actually is no problem. Oh, okay. Because yeah, uh, you read, you know, what can you put with this and that? It's like, don't put them together, but uh, okay. It's funny. It's Doesn't funny. Matter. It's, it's myth. But okay. what I would say, uh, you don't want to use it together, no, for the most part, because of sensitivity. Okay. For the most part, you don't want to use it together with vitamin C, but you I've actually that, yeah. almost, almost have to use it within the same regimen as vitamin C. So the morning after or daily using mm -hmm. vitamin C. And the reason is because, again, what we are trying to do at the end of the day is having your skin want to create more collagen. Yes. And in order to create collagen effectively, it needs vitamin C. Okay. So okay, when so we hear them. things, okay. So when we hear things like collagen actually thins your skin, your skin, your dermis, your epidermis, or your retinol, retinol does this and that, which long-term damages. What you're really doing is, if you remember before, you're asking to to fix your roof with your basement floors. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Instead of you and your great it, your it. great analogies. <laughs> yes. So instead of instead of supplying it with more material. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm taking so many notes here. Okay, peptides. Oh. Oh my God. So peptides. Well, I'm gonna shoot. You use a lot of peptides, a, don't you? Yeah, we're, and I'm, we're gonna shoot a little bit myself in the foot right now, because okay. I would say that peptides aren't like the most effective thing for skincare. Okay. okay. They okay. are, if someone's talking about peptides in their products, and obviously we consult, we, we, we formulate a lot of products for a lot of different people. If someone doesn't say this, this, and then talks about peptides, I don't want to listen because peptides should be like the third thing that people talk about. Oh, interesting. Okay. It is the ability to interact with the amount, the ability to absorb big amounts of peptides to the skin is, is very minimal. And peptides are a lock and key mechanism for the most part, for the most part. Right. They work with receptors and these yeah. receptors get occupied. And then there is a limit to how much we can, we can kind of occupy them. And they also get less and less sensitive. So we actually don't want them to be as effective because they're going to peptides are not for the most part are not built to create a, a large effect every day for the rest of your life they are either maintaining sh moving the needle a little bit supporting repair a little bit or uh being pulsed so for example we use copper tripeptide one which is also mm -hmm called copper peptide or also called GHKCU. GHKCU is as effective as GHKCU three is, is as is one to one as effective in collagen in collagen production as THD ascorbate. One to one. One to one ratio. Okay. Okay. That was one of the vitamin C's you said. We're yes, good. Yes. Okay. Okay. Whereas over 
I wouldn't use more than 3% uh, THG ascorbate because it's like equivalent to like 18% ascorbic acid as far as the stimulation it provides. So it's fine. You can use 3%, but over 3% copper peptide, you are actually getting a, a blunting of the receptor. You're going to make the receptor it's gonna saturate respond it. less well. You're calling wolf wolf. Oh, you, you know, you're, you're, what? you're, you know, you know, like the ki kid's story, you're screaming wolf. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, so your receptors become less and more and more blunted. So it's not something you want to use daily or 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 something like that. So more than three percent isn't act actually more than two percent isn't commonly used because it's considered pharmaceutical grade. So I know of us and another one company that used three percent, but even us, we would have loved to use more. But what we do is we. We create a complex of peptides around it that support its action. So it would okay. you know, give you the results like higher percentage without increasing the percentage. But having said that, peptides, I'm a fan of like ectoin, which is a protein, it's not a peptide. Uh, I'm a fan of G14, which is the, the extract that we use to eliminate senescent cells. I'm a fan of NAD precursors, spermidine. Uh, which which were the only company that uh, that's you know now I landlocked people because we're the only company that has spermidine in the product. But I'm 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 a fan of these pro these ingredients as standalone ingredients as hero ingredients, re resveratrol rather than peptides. You know, yeah. Even CoQ10 would would do more for your skin than peptides. Having wow. said that, as supportive ingredients, right. as resilience ingredients. As a backup, actually, if, if you if you do get you know sun damage, get scratched, anything like that, they're fantastic, but not as the hero product of your routine. And you're going to be disappointed either in the short term or in the long term if you actually bought some product that has like ungodly amounts of peptides because you're going to blunt your receptor. So you're going to be disappointed by peptides either in the short term because you thought they're as effective as injecting them, which they are definitely not. Or you're going to be looking at down the line something that will disappoint you. Just to ref, re, for reference, yeah, the same yeah. HKCU that I talked about. When you inject it to yourself in a therapeutic dose, you're not doing it for more than a month. So mm -hmm. you actually need to take a month off after yeah. a month for for you to get a therapeutic dose by injection. So I think. We can use our our deductive reasoning here and say something else needs to be happening in a daily skincare product. Right. Yeah. I mean, this makes total sense to me when you talk about the dulling of the receptors, because this is what happens when we take too much hormone replacement therapy. The receptors get saturated, they get dulled, and then women will say, oh, I felt so great when I first started my testosterone therapy, and now I don't feel anything, and how is this possible? And that's why well, it's too high, and it's and it saturates the receptors. Mm -hmm. But you could do, for example, let's say, I'm, I'm, you know, let's talk about like testosterone, okay? Like we know people take uh, testosterone replacement therapy, and we know levels that are safe, unsafe, uh, levels that our body can sustain, how it will react to it, et cetera, right? But we could always, um, in as an adjunct, go into a cold ice bath and, and exercise afterwards and increase our testosterone naturally. That, that's a, a, a tried and proven and, and a scientifically backed way to increase testosterone. Get cold first and then exercise. Uh, have your body heat itself back up. Okay. Those two actually don't interact. So those two are separate from each other. We know that, you know, sauna twice a day, five days a week, um, is something that increases uh, growth hormone, is, is another example. Okay. Uh, it is separate than, 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 than uh, growth hormone peptides, uh, growth hormone releasing peptides or, you know, supplementing human growth hormone. We know these two actually don't interact between them. The same way we could have pep different peptides that actually support each other, but don't mm -hmm. interact between them. Or we have different ways to trigger collagen production in the skin that don't interact between them. 
that is sometimes that's why you said you know I can't use uh, you know retinol and peptides or vitamin C and peptides are, that's by the way another thing that people say or I can't use this and that because they are doing the same thing in the skin yeah but they're doing it very differently right right so they don't interact they can yeah. support each other mm -hmm. which I okay so your top ingredients then which are obviously you know in your products I'm guessing <laughs> like but what your top things that you feel like need to be in a daily regime on your face NAD or NAD precursors or both NAD precursors NAD is is enormous it's and, enormous. and it won't go through it's, the skin no it's 50 which times you, you found out the hard way <laughs> well we found out we never we never wanted to have any we always wanted to do the precursors okay but we found out that that the skin uses them it's like I'm not sharing it with the body are you crazy I need it so yeah so it was absorbed locally rather than systemically. Uh, that is definitely the first thing that made us famous. And we, we see now, I don't know, probably 10, 20, 30 companies that have NAD skincare. Oh, yeah. You know, I think that I'd love to have a talk with them because we're pretty confident that we have other things down the pipeline. And I, do, and I am pretty confident that there is room for a lot of companies. I think they're doing it wrong. The reason is, is because I'll give you a little trivia info. Um, when you buy a product, it's the average time it sat on the shelf is between six to 18 months. Okay. Okay. The active ingredients there could be five years old. There is mm. no regulation by the FDA. And companies, again, I mentioned before, us and everyone else normally buys product from a distributor, but just an active ingredient for a distributor. So if you want to save on money, you buy active ingredients who sat on their shelf longer. Okay. okay. So active ingredients could be up to five years old. Okay. NMN, <laughs> NMN, for example, degrades to niacinamide, nicotinamide, in six months okay okay so uh, let me let me make it simpler okay let me back to that <laughs> active ingredients are as their name suggests they're active they interact they move they change so it's very difficult to have the same thing that is on the label apply to your face because it changed through time okay, okay. we talked about vitamin c Skinceuticals, for example, big company, has a has a stat. You know, our 10% vitamin C or 12% vitamin C product will have 7% vitamin C by the time it's applied to your face. You know, their data. Um, again, I'm I don't support ascorbic acid. I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> so, having said that, now we um we need to understand how we preserve nad precursors so first okay. is good good manufacturing practices good practices we actually don't sell anything that's over six months old but okay. the, the the caveat there is that you need to encapsulate them in in lipid you need to make in liposomal so they don't interact with things because they are actually they like water. So if there is fat between them and other things, they don't interact. Okay. So that's like one thing. So if anyone's listening and they want to do an NAD product, you have to make it liposomal. You have to use precursors. You actually have to nano size them to be smaller than your pore. Do all of those things. Okay. Don't, don't just have a, a big name on, on your product. Okay. So definitely not worth buying the products that say NAD on the top, on the front of them. No, it, NAD, the, the, the molecule, even though, so just as a rule of thumb, most things enter our body at a different form than what our body uses them for. Mm -hmm. Most things, like 99% of things. You're going to eat, you're going to drink collagen because it, it is really good for your skin health, right? Your body doesn't take the collagen matrix and then apply, like, and puts it like a Lego piece <laughs> in your skin, breaks it down to its amino acids uses them freely in the body wherever it needs them. And some of them are then being used to create collagen wherever we want, right? Okay. So 
same thing with NAD. If we eat things, you know, dairy, milk, uh, um, uh, meat, whatever that has vitamin B3 forms, it actually then makes NAD out of it. The body doesn't doesn't actually take NAD and uses it. So the skin has no highway, it has no pathway to use NAD because you don't go through your stomach. So it, it won't use it, even if it did absorb and it doesn't absorb, it's too big. No. So yeah. by the way, same thing with collagen. Collagen in skincare is, it doesn't do anything, absolutely nothing. Because collagen is not a currency that your body uses. Okay, but you can, but it's taking okay. it internally is fine. Yeah, but again, Just not it's external. Not a, Yes, and then it, okay. then it's going to be broken down to the currency that the body uses to make collagen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because taking collagen, I definitely notice my nails grow like crazy. Wait so. until you take spermidine. I know. Again, I really want to try spermidine. That's, a, that's not a product that we make as a supplement. But what we did is we took we 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 partnered with a company that has. You know, David Sinclair on their board, the father of like longevity, I say, and, um, you know, a Nobel Prize winner for the discovery of what spermidine does and stuff like that. It's called Spermidine or Longevity Labs. They make a product called Spermidine Life. And we basically partnered up to create a, a spermidine complex that functions well in a in skincare formulation that can absorb through the skin, that can interact with the skin well. Do so, I have spermidine in the ones that I got? I assume so. I actually don't remember what we sent you, but we oh. will we'll send you one <laughs> spermidine for sure. How about that? Uh, okay, good. But, uh, <laughs> but spermidine is probably the thing that we're most excited about. Again, the same way I actually believe that we are not going to be, the, I actually know that we're not going to be the only one. I know actually the biggest players in the field are looking into making NAD and spermidine product, but but it's really fun to be like a company that, you know, does things before other people are doing them. And we believe we do it better than other companies. So I think spermidine is one of our contributions to the uh, skincare longevity. world. Yeah, skincare world. Yeah. Well, and I like that you guys, just, it seems like you've taken everything that step farther and some with yeah. all of your products, how they interact with each other. You know, what is it going to do long term? How can you can you use them every day? Like you, you've you really thought outside the box. It's not yeah, just like, I mean, oh, just slap on this ingredient because we've heard it's good for your skin. Do, be, yeah, because first of all, because what we we are a, a actually a lab that supports itself with skincare products rather than oh, being a skincare brand. Interesting. Supports, yeah. So 90 percent of our revenue gets translated back into R&D. Wow. Uh, that is why we're not like, you know, if someone saw an ad by us, they 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 really fit the type because, <laughs> because we don't actually, you know, spend millions on ads. We don't hire celebrities. We don't, you know. No, most, you don't, yeah. The, the, the most celebrity we have is probably Natalie Needham. No, but that, like, uh, <laughs> it's like what we do is we we definitely support our community but we make sure that we make the best product possible. Some people will like that message and some people want to see their favorite celebrity uses the product, which is, you know, skincare. You know, there are a lot of people using skincare in the world. There is a place for, for everyone, I feel like. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, and I, I want to try spermidine on the inside, for the outside as well. So now I know I can put it on on topically, but I also want to try internal. And then same with NAD. Have you had have you interviewed Nicola Conlin on your podcast? No, Nicola has a uh, Nuchido, Nuchido yeah. Time, which is an NAD supplement that uses very It's not interesting... NAD though. Yeah. No, yeah, it uses a very interesting system to promote NAD in the body. Mm -hmm. um it's interesting it's it's a different it's a different concept than other products out there yeah yeah, yeah. She, she was fascinating i really enjoyed my interview with her but her thing was giving the body the right ingredients to to recycle the nad 
right? Correct. So which Correct. which yeah. makes it which makes sense to me once she explained broke it all down. But the, the, you know, taking something with, like that on the inside. The problem with recycling NAD is uh, as a as a as a concept is that we lose some of it in our urine. Mm -hmm. And so we always have a little bit less to recycle. Uh, and then if we give it recycling material, it can only do so much. So I agree with that. We have it. We actually have two products that do give do work within that paradigm. Mm -hmm. But it is, I believe, a better paradigm for products that are supportive products and then products that we really want to see results in we want to really give it its raw materials to create an ad to to to, to the, the building blocks of an ad rather than saying hey you take care of the building blocks we're just going to tell you please recycle more mm -hmm. and so when are you going to start putting hormones in your products well that we are leaving for other people for peptides are technically for me you know, you're going to leave that for me yeah, exactly. I think, again, the problem with it is that we are on a on a kind of longevity, yeah. um, um, I would say longevity um, path, path of education mm -hmm. and hormone path of education. Hormone usage needs education, but it is a different path of education. Mm -hmm. And the same way we're not big into acne. We can resolve right. acne if it's very if it's tied up with longevity, right? But we we recommend you know you know if you're 15, 20, 25 year, years old and you're dealing with you know bacteria driven acne for the most part, we recommend a different company. We even have it on our website. Nice, yeah, yeah. It's uh, not your niche, yeah, and it's yeah, good to exactly. be niche down. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure, for sure. Same thing with with skin supplements. There are a lot of skin supplements there. We have, I would not be exaggerating if I said we probably have 5,000 people that have requested that we make skin supplements, uh, right. skin supporting but supplements. But we're telling them, hey, there are, you know, there is, there is, uh, there is like, you know, I don't know, three, four, five companies that we would recommend yeah. the skin supplements. That's good. And not, yeah. I appreciate that. I'm the same way. I'm just going to do hormones. Everyone's like, well, why do you do this? I'm like, no, 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 just hormones. It's going to be a like, select number of products and that is it. Well, and be I have really friend, good at it. <laughs> yes, exactly. I have a friend that has a uh, neurotropic company, a brand, uh, something I take, I love. Um, and then they try to do a calming product. And what they found out is that the entire you know, entire runway that they had to this product. They said, hey, we have, you know, let's say just a number. I actually don't know how many users they had, but let's say they said we have 20,000 users. Uh, probably most of they they all like us. They reorder. They all probably want to calm down after we've invigorated their brain. No, <laughs> none of them do. It's not the same. It's a different path, right? Right. So, yeah. Different customer. So, yeah. And and there is so much to innovate within each one of those things, uh, or not even innovate as much as I think make available, make knowledge and 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 usage uh, again like interaction and, and knowledge available to millions upon millions, tens of millions of people that are not aware of it. Same way, like you care about your skin. You cared about the things that we've talked about today, but I would assume none of the people who are listening today knew my opinion, which is a learned opinion, that ascorbic acid is a toxic, cytotoxic, and genotoxic, damages your DNA, ingredients. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the, same, the same thing we can say about hormones, we can say about different genes that we're actually looking at to improve uh, their function. There's, there's a lot... That we can still innovate within our own field, and hormones yeah, will lead to, to people like like you, and 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 yeah. Same thing with <laughs> I don't know with the, with supplements. Same thing with hair products that we're also getting yeah. you know a lot of requests. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stick to what you do best. Okay, now before we run out of time, I gotta ask you just a couple things about treatments that aren't 
four, because yeah. I know you're really smart about that stuff too. So number one, red light therapy mask. Mask, that's from I have friends who make masks. Uh, mask would not be my choice. Okay. It's definitely a, a very uh, convenient choice. You can travel with it, mm -hmm. but it actually doesn't, it's, it limits your stimulation to like a two pound dumbbell. There, you're going to get different results if you're using a two pound or a hundred pounds or 20 pounds dumbbell, right? right? So it can so, work, but it's just a very, very mild. small, mild. mild. So would it be better to have like a full a red light, a panel? And then yeah. it is good for the face. Yes, very good. Very little drawbacks. If you only care about your facial skin, you actually want to expose only your facial skin uh, because there are some interactions with full body, you know, the beds, et cetera, are great, or, you know, whole body panel are great, but yeah, they water down the the uh, local effect. So if you only care about your facial skin, expose only your facial skin. If you care about kind of over bo overall body health and facial skin together, then definitely you can use uh, these, you know, everything together uh, as, as one panel, but it, it is great. Yeah. Okay. It just... D don't tell me too many bad things, but just a little smidge on Botox. <laughs> I mean, Botox is great. Uh, it makes you oh, look better. It okay. is great for depression. Um, mm. Yeah, it, it uh, has some drawbacks, obviously. We actually don't know all of them, but it is a toxin that we're getting into our system. So we need to know what we are giving up and what we're, we're gaining. Um, mm -hmm. What I would say is, again, zinc is very important, and also um, doing a, a facial lymphatic draining massage towards before you do another Botox session. So could, uh, just make sure you move your lymphs, you, you kind of drain the, the excess Botox from mm -hmm. your, your face. The there, are a yeah. Couple, yeah, th th there are a couple of peptides that can support Botox the, the, the results for longer, so you could do it less. Um, actually, a, a few, but two good ones are, uh, one is very, very common. It's called Argyrelin. It also has a sister peptide that is called SNAP8. SNAP8 is good around the eyes. Argyrelin is good for around the face. Hexapeptide 8 is the, is the ingredient name for you looking in the back. And the other one's called Lupicil. They're both work different than Botox. They they don't work the same. It's not like your your it's not topical Botox, but they do prevent nerve nerves from firing over and over again in the same place. And okay. then and then you get longer results from Botox. So instead of like doing it every three, four months, you could do it every six months to eight months. So uh, do you have them, any products yeah. with them? Yeah, which which we, one? We, we use depends on the version, but we actually have them in our face in um, our face cream that is called Youth Daily. We have them in our eye cream that's called Eye Care, and we have them in our face serum that is called Youth Reset. You know what's funny, and maybe I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but so I've got. The eye care and the, do I have the face serum? No, the youth daily maybe? I can't remember. Okay. I only do Botox in my forehead, but um, uh -huh. anyways, I I just started to notice that it, it's wearing out. And I'm yeah. like, when was the last time that I did it? And I realized that it's been like well over four months. And that's the longest uh -huh. I've ever gone before I started noticing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And mm -hmm. I was like, it's not even, it's still, I could still get away with probably another couple of weeks. Yeah. And I have so been care, using your products. <laughs> so care, our older moisturizer, which is still very good. It's just a lower price point, which again, if that's your price point, go for it. Also has... Uh, those peptides, they're just not as high percentage, but but it also has them. So I'm most sure of our I products, one, yeah, I think. yeah, mo the most care of our products, the eye. 
Yeah, so the reason we use them also in product, even if you don't use Botox, is that it, they prevent or they delay the accumulation of wrinkles. Because if you don't move your face in a predictable manner over and over and over again, you're accumulating less damage wrinkles. in a very, very specific, right. exactly. So they're good for skin longevity as well as, you know, immediate results of you you look like you have less wrinkles and uh, they also support that longevity of Botox if you do do it so you could do it less. Okay. I love that. Yeah. Um, Cause the less is better. I try and stretch it out as much as I can, but. <laughs> Great. And, and again, <laughs> lymphatic, lymph facial lymphatic yeah. massage, buccal massage. These are okay. great things to do, you know, in preparation. So mm -hmm. I notice, you know, I know I have a couple of weeks, let me get it like two sessions in. I promise you long-term, you're actually going to be able to use less Botox units long-term to get more results. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm going to do that. Um, what about radio frequency laser stuff? So, so laser and radio frequency are different, even though people conflate them because they just go to their esthetician or a plastic surgeon or dermatologist and they do whatever they do and it doesn't feel good anyway. So, <laughs> I haven't done anything like that yet, but I keep thinking I want to, but I don't know where to start or what's good, what's bad. So I, I agree. So I'll, I'll say these rejuvenating treatments, I'll divide them into three, like never, very seldom, and, you know, you know, once a year or, or a few times. Okay. So never would be radio frequency. Radio frequency literally ages you mechanically. It, 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 it's a pretty long explanation. Radio frequency heats up deep tissue in your skin and swells it up. So what people think the results are, are not the results. That's the swelling um, as a reaction of that burning of your, your inner layer. When the results set in and, and the claimed results set in, more collagen, blah, 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 what you're getting is a scar tissue that is so minute, like minute as far as results, by the way, that you don't, you think the results went away, but actually, no, you have a scar tissue. You basically fused your fascia in your skin and that's not positive. And you're actually, you know, you're, let's say you ever wanted to do plastic surgery, your plastic surgeon is going to tell you that your skin is a bad candidate um, and you're going to heal slower. Laser resurfacing is something that I'd recommend doing every five years or so. That's it? Yeah. Uh, you don't need more than that, but yeah. Now, um, things like, you know, BBL, like uh, very, very, mm -hmm. like IPL, intense pulse mm -hmm. light, or, or like very, very, very minimal laser. These we can do, you know, every year, or every couple of years, that's fine. And what I, I would recommend doing is a very light like like Pollock Peel series every, you know, I'd say even, even every, every six months to a year, we make one for professionals that has that copper peptide to pr offset some of that. Again, because that, that's what we actually want the peptides to, to, repair, to help repair. Um, but that would be something that you would do with a few sessions of, you know, a couple times a year or every once a year. The reason I'm 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 saying is that, that a is chemical because, peel. Sorry, you know, yes, it is dubbed as a chemical peel, but glycolic acid we find in nature. So, oh, you can get that in like the ordinary has that, doesn't they? Don't that's they? correct. It's it's slightly different as far as like, okay. um, you know, it's like saying um, a car. It could be a Formula One car. Or it could be a you know, a my Ford dad's a Ford. yeah so uh or or uh, you know you can have fuel you can have car fuel you can have rocket fuel etc so uh, just to give you an example like you, you know a glycolic fuel that you would get you know once a year or something is like 70 percent or, oh. or and it also depends it could be like and you have that but you only sell it to professionals only to professionals and also like not only the percentage but also i'm a professional <laughs> On hormones, but I'm a uh -huh. professional. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so we sell it for, for them to do facials with as part of a okay. protocol. Um we actually just yeah, so but it's not only the percentage, it's also the way of that it's 
that it's buffered. There are a few things there, but what I would say is that don't do it. Don't do it on a regular basis. Like don't buy something that has a like salicylic or 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 any type of AHA or BHA, like alpha hydroxy acid or beta hydroxy acid, like uh, like glycolic acid, um, lactic acid, salicylic. Uh, salicylic acid all of those but they're great but don't like don't don't overdo it don't okay. do it every that, that that is a paradigm from like 20 30 years ago which is which is um like more stimulation for repair is better but we we rely on our body responding to it well Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that stimulation for repair was there when you when your wrinkle was created. Your body just didn't repair it well. So if I just stimulate it all the time, we're going to lose other things like skin resilience, like uh, the ability to to recover. God forbid, if something serious happened, even if you burnt, you got burned by the sun. You're sacrificing your telomeres. You're sacrificing your DNA function. You're sacrificing skin thickness. So all of those things add up and if you if you demand of your skin too much at one point you're gonna you're gonna lose vitality and resilience later on okay how many products do you guys have 17 but but how many are available do... to the public no no that's the the ones that are available to the public it's but we're 17 so... okay yeah <laughs> but what someone someone can do is is they can go on our website there is a quiz they can, you know, um, go through that and, and they get, get a result of what they need to use. Yeah, we're freezing up here. Can you hear me? I've frozen on your end. I can. Yeah. But now, now oh, you, you defrosted. Now I'm defrosted. <laughs> what does that mean? No, you were frozen, frozen on my end, but now you got defrosted and now you're fine. I was frozen. Now I'm defrosted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah. start again with you can go on our website. Yeah. You, so, yeah, we do have 17 products, but m most of them are nuances. So we have like seven, I would say, like, um, like, backbone products that we believe like everyone should use you no know, cleanser all the way up to like you know moisturizers so everything in between um but what you could do is go to our website there is a quiz very very short very simple you get like you know an information of what products will benefit you specifically and you can make a decision there yeah because that's confusing again. It's like, well, what do I need? I want all of those benefits. So yeah. if I but can't actually, obviously so, use 17 products on your face. Yes. And a lot of them do have similar ingredients to some extent. Like a lot of them, for example, just as an example, the thing I mentioned that, that, that those biomimetic lipids that repair your skin barrier, we have them without the retinol too. If someone has like rosacea or you have impaired skin barrier, so we can we have a product to repair only that, you know. So right, if you use if you don't have that problem, but and you want the beautiful benefits of good bio, good skin barrier, you could use bio retinol and get the same the same benefits plus retinol. Okay. Okay. And what do people like? What do what can people expect from using your products? Like, what do you hear I'd say three a lot of? Yeah. Okay. So I'd say three things that are we hear often, and that are I would say we're proud of. Mm -hmm. First is is what we think of as optimal performance. Your skin looks the best that it can look. 
you know, within, I'd say within four to six weeks, your skin just performs, you're seeing a difference, you're smiling, the skin snaps faster back into place. It's less sensitive, it's, it's healthier, more glowing, you look younger, etc. Second thing is again, resilience. We actually just, you know, got a very nice review that uh, the team forwarded me just before we were talking today. Uh, and someone said, you know, I went into, you know, some some mole surgery, which I've had before, and my skin recovered much, much faster. So that's number two. Number three is, again, longevity. And that's not something that, you know, you would see immediately, but people who use our product, you know, one year, two years, three years, four years, they're, they're, they, they are lowering the rate of aging. Their skin ages slower. So I, I, that's a whole different podcast, but this is completely different than anything we spoke about until now. Oh, okay. Great. And it's at younggoose.com? Yep. Young Goose. Is that com. the website? Yeah, younggoose.com. Uh, okay. Our, okay, our so Instagram, I'll link to is, that in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. Our Instagram, that which is pretty informative, is is young underscore goose underscore skincare. And if, okay. if someone is really, you know, said, you know, I've discovered that I want to hear an hour and a half about why vitamin C, how it behaves and why it should be whatever. Or if I want to hear, you know, again, like an hour of Amitai and, and um, some, I don't know, you know, Karen talk about hormones and the, their their effects on the skin for like an hour, <laughs> then they can go to, they can listen to the Biohacking Beauty podcast. And that's where we really dive deep into some of those mechanisms. Yes, I, I've been listening to your podcast and I, I listened to the red light one. That was the last one that I listened to. And I thought that was super interesting. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay, this is good to know. And you have a product that actually helps that you can put on before you do red light therapy. Yeah. And it doubles the effects of Which the I red thought light was therapy. Pretty cool. So doubles the effect. Yeah. Yeah. So Okay, can you send me all 17 products and the one that <laughs> and the peel? Okay. <laughs> Bring them my way. No. Sounds well, good. I appreciate your time. I could sit here and pick your brain for another like couple of hours. I feel like I'm like, I wish I could have I wish I talked to you years ago. Because I've I've clearly been doing some wrong things. Well the, the good that I know now. Yeah, exactly. Um well thank you so much for coming on. We're stalling. Uh, yeah. the internet service is going down here. As, as it's like, okay, guys, you, enough talking. I'm out. <laughs> um, thank you very much for coming on the show. I look forward to having you back because this conversation is not done. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It was amazing.